So then guys, it's PSL here and I'm here for the sixth episode in my Stuart Manager career mode on Grand Prix World. Last time we just finished the Monaco Grand Prix and we were going through the post Monaco news. Now I'll get back to that in a little bit. Of course I do need to check to see if there's anything I need to do before we head off to Canada for the Canadian Grand Prix. But honestly, I don't think there was that much I really need to go through. You can see in the background the latest in the negotiations with the engine supplier Ferrari and with our cash sponsors. So there's the latest update on that front, but assuming there was nothing else that needs to be done, and of course I'll cut away to check, but assuming there was nothing else that needs to be done, then yeah, let's get ready for the Canadian Grand Prix. I wonder whether we'd get any tyre upgrades. Well, Bridgestone have given us an upgraded tyre. Unfortunately, an upgraded wet tyre. I'd rather have an upgraded dry tyre, but they've probably given them to the top teams. So, <laughs> we've been left with an upgraded wet tyre. I mean, I mean, it's still an upgrade. Let's see. Yeah, in fact, it is, yeah. One higher on grip, two higher on stiffness, and one higher on temperature. So, that's quite a sizable upgrade there so we got a better wet weather tyre in many respects I'm now actually hoping that it's a wet Grand Prix a fully wet Grand Prix not just an intermediate Grand Prix because our intermediate tyre is still rubbish anyway oh yes in the news um, I mean okay manager of the month Ron Dennis won manager of the month Alan Pross worst F1 manager how surprising I love this though this is this is typical journalism, isn't it? One of the stranger rumours at the last race was that some of the teams were spying on each other's cars. I don't know why that's a strange rumour. I mean, surely that's semi-expected in Formula 1. But, yes, I mean, oh, I love how... I love how journalists they reported on, they'd said, Oh, Ferrari's car looks a bit suspicious. We then investigate it, and then they... Say it's weird that we investigated it. Oh, typical. Anyway, Ferrari, yes, we, we know about their power brakes. I'm not going to investigate that again. But both of Jordan's drivers pulled off another fantastic race start last Grand Prix. Now, that's one of those cryptic clues. So, I think Jordan have got a driver aid. Now, I would assume... Probably traction control. There's no launch control in this game. No, that must be traction control. Right, so we're going to investigate Jordan to see if they have a... There you go. So Jordan will see if they have a traction control. And yes, without further ado, let's head on into the 1998 Canadian Grand Prix. Okay, so qualifying is forecast as being dry, overcast at least, so a dry qualifying session for now at least, and that's all fine, that's all fine, so let's see where we qualify, Jan Magnussen once again beating his teammate, we know Magnussen is on the soft tyres, but I've kept saying that Magnussen isn't that bad in this game, and thankfully he keeps proving me right, Magnussen in 11th, beating both arrows drivers that's good news and did everyone qualify yes they did so a fairly uninteresting qualifying session so magnuson qualified in 11th barrichello in 14th still ahead of both salbers but salber are running goodyear tires so that won't help although of course by this point in the season goodyear could have brought better dry weather tires which are more uh, comparable to the bridgestone tires it is entirely possible, especially for Ferrari, because Ferrari probably have a works deal, so they've, they will have improved the tyres themselves, and they will be at the top of Goodyear's priority. So, Ferrari's upturn in performance in dry conditions could be purely down to the tyres. But of course, Ferrari, they're doing loads. They've probably got a works fuel deal and a works engine deal, so they could have upgraded their engine loads and their fuel loads as well. But then again, the same can be said for... Well, for McLaren at least, who almost certainly have a works everything deal. They certainly have a works engine deal. And the tyres which are better as standard in dry conditions. But, Michael Schumacher took pole position. Heinz Frenton in second. Giancarlo Fizzi Keller in third. Jack Villeneuve fourth. Eddie Irvine in fifth. 
And then you've got both McLaren drivers. Now I have to say that the top seven drivers were separated by just over three tenths of a second. So it was quite a small gap. But even still, McLaren were at the bottom end of that range. Oh, that's exactly what I don't want. It's a light rain race. So I presume intermediate tyres. That's not what I want. I want wet, yeah, intermediate tyres. Great, so that's screwed us over. I mean, it's I mean, it's unlikely we would score points anyway. We would need to score points. We would need basically everyone else to retire anyway. Although it is a wet Grand Prix, so that, that could still happen. Let's see if it does. Uh, no, it doesn't. And look at that. Barrichello was four laps down on the race leader. Michael Schumacher. Yeah, this is something you kind of have to come to expect and that is if there's a wet Grand Prix Michael Schumacher will dominate I mean especially in this first season with Goodyear having the better wet weather tyres and Michael Schumacher being a wet weather specialist he's gonna dominate he lapped everyone on the field at least once so Michael Schumacher won the 1998 Canadian Grand Prix lapping everyone at least once and lapping most people at least twice. Fizzy Keller, Coulthard, Lacey Villeneuve, in fact Hakkinen isn't there so Hakkinen must have retired. Disqualified? Wow! That is astonishing. Ralph Schumacher. I mean that might not be down to Ralph Schumacher's driving ability. That might be down to the trash control. Although Damon Hill well, Damon Hill went out with an accident, but he still wasn't disqualified. Oh, Jordan, 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 that's not good, and I think we might have had a part to play in that. So, Ralph Schumacher is the first driver to be disqualified this series. Hakkinen and Irvine both retired with an accident at around the same time, and I feel like that's the second time that's happened. Anyway, yes, Schumacher won the 1998 Canadian Grand Prix, Heinz Old Frenzen in second, Alexander Wurtz, another podium finish to his name, and he beat his teammate Giancarlo Fizzi Keller. David Coulthard finished in fifth, Jean Lacy, fantastic Grand Prix, to finish in sixth. I think finally the conditions went in Sauber's favour, although even despite that, Jean Lacy in the Sauber had to beat Jacques Villeneuve in the Williams. So, in the Drivers' Championship, Mika Hakkinen has now only got a one-point lead over Michael Schumacher in second. It is very much a Hakkinen-Schumacher battle, as I expected right at the very start of this season. Eddie Irvine is still in third place, with Giancarlo Fisichella in fourth. Frentzen and Coulthard are now in joint fifth. Wurtz in seventh and ahead of Jacques Villeneuve. And then, of course, you've got Jean Lacy, who has joined the duo of drivers to make it a trio of drivers who have got a single point to their name. In the Constructors' Championship, Ferrari are leading it by six points over McLaren, but McLaren have still got a sizable advantage over Benetton, and Benetton actually are now nine points ahead of Williams, so the Constructors' Championship is almost looking like it's falling into place, so Ferrari Ferrari have gone from behind to now lead the Constructors' Championship, and unless McLaren can up their pace and rate of race finishes, I think Ferrari could well win the Constructors' Championship. And increasingly, it's looking like Benetton are going to finish third in the Constructors' Championship, as they're nine points ahead of Williams, and pulling away as well. Benetton have done amazingly well this season, and yeah, I think third place I think they've got that wrapped up and that's surprising but you know fair play to them oh okay we didn't find a drive raid okay I wonder if okay so actually we had nothing to do with Ralph Schumacher's disqualification Oh, that's fantastic. Inside sources say Stuart is running out of cash. I don't know why everyone in Stuart is so pessimistic, and I don't know why everyone in Stuart keeps talking to the media about how badly we're doing. I think we're doing perfectly well. But they have got a point, to be fair, because this is the first time that we've dipped below a million after a Grand Prix, so we are actually losing cash. 
Oh, right, no, this is... Okay, we've got two major bits of news. Well, one we already sort of know. Ralph Schumacher was disqualified from the last race after using illegal driver aids. So I don't know what that means for that driver aid in general. I don't know what that means for Damon Hill. All I know is we looked for that driver aid and didn't find it. The FIA did, though. And Ralph Schumacher was disqualified from the Grand Prix for use of, presumably, a traction control system. But look at the top. Eddie Irvine will miss at least the next Grand Prix owing to injury. So, who does that mean? Oh, who will... Does that mean Luca Badoa will be stepping in? Someone's got to be stepping in for Eddie Irvine then for the next Grand Prix, and I think it will be Luca Badoa. And that's really bad, actually, because Eddie Irvine... Well, he was leading the Drivers' Championship. He still had a good chance of winning the Drivers' Championship, but now... Oh, now he's injured, so he's he's out of it. Um, that's really unfortunate for him, actually. Ferrari have signed a major development deal with Goodyear. What else is there? Ten pages of news. Christ. Stewart admits to problems this year and is looking for new drivers. Okay. Um, how exciting. Okay, speaking of Luca Badoa, Luca Badoa will be racing for Benetton. York Muller will be going to Minardi. Ralph Schu Ralph Schumacher will be racing for Ferrari. It's going to be an all Schumacher Ferrari team. Tuero, Esteban Tuero has bought a seat with Jordan. Jordan are resorting to pay drivers. Jan Magnussen is potentially moving to Prost. Arrows have got a cash sponsor, so finally we're seeing the back market teams, or the more midfield teams at least, getting a cash sponsor. Jordan have also got one. Minardi have even got a sponsor already, and we haven't. That's really bad, but of course I have been prioritising getting a engine supplier sorted. Prost has been in deep discussion with Rory Byrne over a technical director post with the team next year. Rory Byrne, the highest rated technical director in the game, I believe so, or maybe joint highest with Adrian Newey, and he might be going to Prost. That's... Wow, that's an extraordinary rumour, that is. If that comes true, that will be amazing. And the FIA is said to be unhappy with certain teams constantly moaning about other teams cheating. I think they mean us, because we're the team that has been moaning. Ah, oh, so the FIA is already annoyed with us. Fantastic. I've only... Ah, oh, and sports journalists are annoyed with us. Right. I've been... It was, only, it was only in the Australian Grand Prix I was voted the best manager. Now, sports journalists have voted myself as worst manager of the month. I don't know what basis they've got for that, bearing in mind I've signed a partner deal with Ferrari. We did fairly well last Grand Prix, 9th and 12th. Both of our cars finished. Maybe it's because our financial situation isn't looking all that good. So then, since we're just before the midway point in the season, I thought I'd give you a mid-season staffing update. So as you can see, the morale in our commercial department is 2 out of 5, which means the effort is only 80%. 80%! So that means we've got, well, we did have 50 employees and then one of them resigned. So, yeah, one of them resigned. One of our very good employees as well, unfortunately, resigned, and I think they resigned. Probably because the morale was low. Actually, I'll tell you what, this does sound a bit like what's been going on in McLaren in recent in recent news with the Fredo gate, but anyway, um, because the morale is low in our team, that means these 50, I know it's 49, but basically 50 employees are working as if there's only 40 of them. That sounds, well, it doesn't sound great, but I'll tell you what, it's better than in our design, engineering and mechanic department, because there's 50 employees, but look, the morale in each of those departments is one out of five which means the effort is only 60%. So that means you've got 50 employees working as if there's only 30 of them. So as you can imagine, that's a really inefficient spend of money. We're spending $2.8 million a year for the salaries of 50 designers, but because they're only working at 60% effort, that means 
effectively they're working as if there's only 30 of them. Now here's the thing, as I called this back in the first, maybe second episode of this series, I said we were going to have a morale crisis. So this is part of the reason why I've been employing more people over the course of all the episodes. I haven't showed it because, well, anything, I, I mean, you might have been able to have guessed this really, but anything which is standard practice, so hiring of employees, um, the repairing of the cars, testing would be if we actually had a lot of money, and when we do become a top team, testing will be standard practice. But yes, anything which is standard practice, I've already explained to you my strategies and the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing, so I'm just doing it off screen. So I've already explained why I'm employing more people and I've just been doing it off screen. So yeah, that's really the update in terms of the size of the department because at the start, bearing in mind this was only eight rounds ago, at the start of this career mode, there were only 40 employees, about 40 employees in each department. It's now about 50. The mechanics is a slight exception, but there just hasn't really been anyone to employ, to be honest, for whatever reason. But that's fine, the mechanics department is the one I'm least concerned about. Right then, I've actually got something to show you on the engineering subsection of menus, and that is the improvement to this season's chassis we finished it, so now we can construct that, and right, okay, it's actually, right, I think I've already explained this before, and that is, of course, you can offset the lack of staff with extra money, so if you don't actually have, if you have remaining staff, but not enough to complete a project, then you can use that remaining staff and then offset the lack of staff needed with money. Now because, yes you need more staff to upgrade the chassis but it's cheaper, it actually works out as financially more beneficial to pump the extra money into the upgrade because what was that, a, an extra $11,000 we had to pay to finish the chassis upgrade? But because the spare part manufacturer is more expensive, you'd have to put in more money because, well, just proportionately. So, there you go, we've still been able to manufacture three spare parts and a upgrade to this season's chassis. So that means the handling rating has gone up from 40% to 46%. So that's good, so we've got a chassis upgrade heading into the French Grand Prix. We're entering the French Grand Prix with $720,000. Let's see if we actually leave it with more than that. It's going to be a similar amount. I hope it's more. It might be a bit more. It might be a bit less, but we'll keep an eye on that. Anyway, let's head off to the 1998 French Grand Prix. <laughs> Oh yes, of course, because Eddie Irvine was injured at the previous Grand Prix, Luca Badoa has had to step in for him. So, wow, this is the first time I'm actually glad they're showing us the competitor list, because there's actually been a change. Yes, Luca Badoa, for maybe just this Grand Prix, I don't know how long it will be, but for this Grand Prix at least, Luca Badoa will be Ferrari's driver number two. And, to be honest, I mean, this is, this, I mean, if you know anything about Luca Padoa's career, then, you know, the tragedy in which, well, you know that, arguably, he should have replaced Michael Schumacher in the 99 season, and then it was Mika Salo who did, and then, of course, Luca Padoa eventually did drive for Ferrari in 2009, and the less said about that, the better, but, it is nice, if you know anything about Luca Padoa and his Formula 1 career, it is nice to see him actually race in a Ferrari. Well then, these are some very interesting qualifying results. David Coulthard has taken pole position with Michael Schumacher in second for this dry overcast qualifying session. Mick Akinen has qualified in third, Fizzy Keller in fourth, Luca Badoa in fifth. In his debut race for Ferrari, Luca Badoa, he's done all right, qualified in fifth and he was only about one and a half tenths of a second off of Michael Schumacher. 
That's really not bad at all. Really not bad at all. Alexander Wurtz in 6th, Fizzy Keller in 7th. Actually, who's replaced Badoa? No, of course... Wow. Wow, okay, that is something. Um, I was going to say, I wonder who's replaced Padoa at Minardi, but of course, he wasn't racing for Minardi this season, so it's still Tuero and Nakano, but... Heinzhold Frentzen, I don't know what he's done. It's probably an illegal drive raid, but Heinzhold Frentzen has been banned after qualifying. How extraordinary. That's astonishing. Banned after qualifying. But Jacques Villeneuve is still there. He's still in 7th. Anyway, in qualifying, Rubens Barrichello qualified in 10th ahead of Pedro Diniz and Damon Hill in the Jordan. Wow. And Jan Magnussen is just behind his teammate and just behind Damon Hill. Well, I say just behind. Just behind in terms of track position, but he was half a second a lap off. So it's going to be a dry race here in Magni Cor, and it was a dry qualifying session, well an overcast qualifying session. And 10th and 13th in qualifying, that's really good. Let's not forget we bought a chassis upgrade heading into this Grand Prix, and that's that's quite substantial, a 6% upgrade. That's that's fairly big. Probably the biggest individual upgrade we've bought to any Grand Prix. Because we bought at least one technology upgrade before we've we've had improved engines but nothing really beats an improved chassis anyway let's yes this is all fine so let's see how well we do in the race the first race with our brand new and improved 1998 chassis how well will we do fourth place oh my word that's fantastic Rubens Barrichello has finished in fourth. Fourth place for the 1998 French Grand Prix. He's beaten Ralph Schumacher, he's beaten Pedro Diniz, Mika Salo, Damon Hill. He wasn't even lapped. And the astonishing thing is, is neither Ferrari driver finished, but Jacques Villeneuve did. Villeneuve surely shouldn't even be racing. Luca Badeau has been disqualified. What? What on earth is going on? I feel like Ferrari are just stitching him up. I thought this was a chance for Luca Badoa to rewrite his reputation at Ferrari and he's got banned. Well, well, well. What a very interesting Grand Prix. Jacques Villeneuve winning despite his teammates being banned in qualifying. But anyway, Jacques Villeneuve has won the 1998 French Grand Prix. Alexander Wurtz finished in second. Mika Hakkinen in third. Rubens Barrichello in fourth. Ralph Schumacher fifth. Pedro Diniz sixth. Mika Solo seventh. Damon Hill eighth. Jan Magnussen still did very well to finish in ninth. He beat Johnny Herbert and then, and then the backmarkers, to be honest. But Barrichello had a fantastic race. Fourth. In a Stewart, yes, in a newly improved Stewart, but fourth for Stewart, and he wasn't even lapped. So then, that all means that Rubens Barrichello is finally registered on the Drivers' Championship with three points, and in fact, we can actually scroll down, albeit only one slot, but either way. Mika Salo, Jean Alessi, and Damon Hill are all tied on one point. Raul Schumacher has got two points. That's still less than Rubens Barrichello. Barrichello has got the same points total as Pedro Diniz. And Diniz has done fantastically well this season. But in the Drivers' Championship, Hakkinen and Schumacher are still the top two. Hakkinen leading from Michael Schumacher. So Schumacher's retirement certainly helped Mika Hakkinen pull out a gap on Schumacher. In the Constructors' Championship, McLaren have closed up to Ferrari thanks to neither Ferrari driver finishing the Grand Prix. Well, actually, that's not strictly true. Luca Badoa was disqualified. He could still have finished the Grand Prix and then was disqualified after it. Which, if that's the case, then... Well, if that's the case, then that could be very interesting. I would like to know where Luca Badoa actually finished out on track. Anyway... 
The Constructors' Championship battle between Ferrari and McLaren is heating up. There's still a battle between Benetton and Williams, there's only 5 points separating those two teams. And then you've got the very interesting battle for 5th in the Constructors' Championship. Because for a while, it looked like Arrows were going to take it whilst facing no competition. But then Jordan came into play, Sauber came into play... And now, so have Stewart. We have really burst into the Formula 1 scene, scoring three points. Stewart, we're tied on points with Jordan, and we're only one behind Arrows. We're joint sixth in the Constructors' Championship, and we could so easily be fifth. Oh, okay, right. Now, as you may have noticed just before we went into the French Grand Prix, I reassigned 12% of my mechanics to see if Ferrari have power brakes. Now we know they have power brakes, that's not a secret, we've already gone through this, we already, after a previous Grand Prix, complained about them having power brakes. The reason I reinvestigated is, firstly, it was reported in the news again that Ferrari's cars exude very little brake dust, and also, despite the fact we've already complained about Ferrari having power brakes, and despite the fact that we forced well, we complained about it, and then the FIA looked at it and said, well, it's perfectly legal. But, despite that, the FIA has not officially recognised Ferrari as having a driver aid. So I really don't get it, I really don't know. So I've reinvestigated it, but Ferrari, they've still got the power brakes, the FIA still haven't officially recognised them. We've already complained, let's copy. So we're not going to rat Ferrari out. Let's see if we can copy their power brakes. And if we can, then this is a free driver aid. And this will be very helpful for our on-track performance. I don't think it will be successful. In fact, complaining and copying rarely are successful in this game. But let's see if we can. Unfortunately, the design of the driver aid was too complex for your chief mechanic to understand. Okay, actually... It's the Chief Mechanics rating that determines this, not the Chief Designers, but either way, the Chief Mechanic cannot understand the driver aid, it's too complicated for him, and so we cannot copy Ferrari's power brakes. So that was massively successful. Massively so, although... It's really strange, because the FIA know Ferrari have power brakes, however... Because they're not officially recognised, they're still running them illegally. We can't complain about them, we can't copy them. But I think... I think that was why Luca Badoa was disqualified. Now here's the really weird thing. If you look at the race results... No, sorry, not at the race results. If you look at... Here you go. So you got the lap by lap running of the Grand Prix. So here you go. You got Luca Badoa in fifth, car number four. Now, Luca Padoa started in 5th, he then moved up to 4th, then into 3rd place. So, on lap 8 of the French Grand Prix, he was in 3rd place. And then, suddenly, he's in... Well, suddenly, he's down to 6th, and then, anyway, the point is, is... You can see Luca Padoa, so there you go, back up into 3rd, and then into 2nd place. Once you get to the end, look, car number 4, Luca Padoa's car... Well, technically, Eddie yeah, Irvine's car, but car number 4 finished the Grand Prix in second. Look, it's car number one, it's Jacques Villeneuve in first, then it's Luca Padoa in second, then car number six, Wurtz in third, and then it's Hakkinen, and then it's Barrichello in fifth. But despite the fact it says Luca Padoa finished the Grand Prix in second, he crossed the line in second, but if you look at the race results... It's Villeneuve, then Wurtz, then Hacken, and then Barrichello. Luca Padoa simply does not exist. He was disqualified, and I think it's because of the driver aid. So then, just before I end off this episode, let's have a quick look through the news. And if you look at the news, two major deals, as the headline says, have been announced. The first one is between McLaren and Buzzin Hornets. McLaren's team sponsor next year will not be East, but will be Buzzin Hornets. Buzzin Hornets currently sponsor Jordan, but it does open up the very interesting question of 
who are East going to sponsor next season. One of the three five-star team sponsors, they pay in excess of $30 million per season. Any team would love to have them. And it will be very interesting to see who they give their millions upon millions of dollars to. Winfried, one of the other five-star team sponsors, they'll be sponsoring Williams next season as they do this season. So that's... That's not amazing news, but, you know, at least Williams aren't seemingly downscaling. Anyway, Jacques Villeneuve won the Grand Prix, so good news for Williams all in all. Actually, no, it's not good news for Williams all in all, because page two, Heinz Held Frenson was disqualified at the last race for using a car fitted with illegal driver aids. So that confirms that, and it also confirms this, right, Luca Badoa was disqualified at the last race for using a car fitted with illegal driver aids. But, I mean, this is... I don't get this. Ferrari have power brakes. They won't willingly give them to the FIA to ratify them, but the FIA won't recognise the power brakes, even though they know Ferrari have got them and we complained about it, and the FIA said they're fine, so I don't understand. The FIA think they're fine. Ferrari don't want to give them to the FIA, not willingly. But Luca Badoa was disqualified for using a driver aid, which everyone knows they have, and the FIA said to me is fine. Actually, I'll be honest, I reckon I should go to Jean Todd with this information, because the FIA unfairly disqualified Luca Badoa because Luca Badoa, if he was disqualified for power brakes, then the FIA, maybe privately, but the FIA said to me, they're fine. So either way, they should either take the power brakes off of Ferrari or reinstate Luca Badoa's second place finish because something's not right there. And also that's cost Jean Todd six points in the Constructors' Championship. I should tell Jean this. I think Jean Todd would appreciate this information. I wish, I wish I could send him an email with this information in the game. But the FIA, they're they're kind of mavericks. I don't understand what they're doing. And actually, that is not maverick. That's not really a term you want to use to describe an independent governing body because the FIA is doing some very weird stuff, and I don't understand why. Anyway, now that I've just fueled an FIA conspiracy theory, let's quickly move on to the next piece of news, and that is that Jordan have signed a major development deal with Goodyear. Page 4 of the news, and I'll try and get through the rest of it fairly quickly. First off, Jan Magnussen is frustrated with us and with the car, which is ridiculous considering we just upgraded the car, and... Rubens Barrichello, in exactly the same car, just finished the French Grand Prix in 4th. And he did in 9th, so he can only really blame himself, but anyway, he's frustrated with us. It's probably why he's decided to go to Arrows next year. But to be fair, actually, that's not bad for Jan Magnussen, because Arrows... Arrows have done impressively well this season so far, so that's a good move for Jan, unless they've made him their test driver. Who knows, either way, Jan's got away from us, fair enough. Although I like Jan, even if he doesn't like the team or the car or whatever. Benetton will be using Mega Chrome engines on the customer deal, so no change from this season. It's actually happened! It's actually happened! Prost have hired Rory Byrne to design the car that will bring, supposedly, Prost victory. As you can see, Roy Byrne is the best chief designer. He's five-star rated, and what that means is that Prost chassis in 2000, so yes, not next season, but the season after next season, Roy Byrne will be designing a perfect chassis for Prost for the year 2000. So actually, in the year 2000, Prost are going to have the best chassis on the grid. Carl Gadden will be joining Jordan. And that's a very good signing for Jordan, one of the better chief mechanics, I believe. Add Williams. I signed Carl Gadden in my Grand Prix Major 2 series, and he's gone to Jordan. And I managed Jordan in my Grand Prix Major 2 series. This is really weird. So Carl Gadden, for the second series in a row, has gone to Jordan. 
Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I certainly did. We scored our first points of the season. Not just one point, but multiple points. Three points! Halfway into the 1998 season, this is fantastic. And now we've got an improved chassis. Hopefully, hopefully that's something we can repeat, although I don't think it will be common. I mean, there were a lot of retirements and disqualifications that went to our favour, but even still, three points courtesy of Rubens Barrichello. That's, that's fantastic news. But anyway, as I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. In the next episode, I'll be talking more so about sponsorship and about fundraising. I think, I think I will be raising money in the next episode. So I'll be talking about that in the next episode and I'll be doing at least two Grand Prix in the next episode. Hopefully three, but we'll see. It depends. Anyway, I'll see you guys then.